Did you, did, you, did you get emotional when you put the uh, uh, wardrobe on? No, I got paid. Welcome to Movie List. And today, we're counting down the top 20 funniest Harrison Ford interview moments. There's this, there's this grumpy Harrison Ford image. That's horse <laughs> The screen legend is known for his dry sense of humor during interviews as much as his action heroics. So for this list, we've compiled some of the screen legend's best ones. What's your favorite moment? Let us know in the comments section below. Number 20, playing with Han, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Harrison was seriously injured on the set of Star Wars The Force Awakens when a hydraulic door crushed his leg, breaking it in two places. They close up. Door on. No, 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 Harrison. Jimmy brings out a visual aid to help us understand what happened, and Harrison uses it as an opportunity to poke fun at some of his other famous injuries. No. <laughs> this one I did in the plane crash. Okay, but the we're plane. here to talk yeah. about this that one. <laughs> as Harrison shows Jimmy what happened, there's unfortunately some collateral damage, much to the toy-loving host's chagrin. This one, that one they was dislocated the ankle, ankle. forward. <laughs> That's worth a lot of money. That's an original. But something about the doll must have stirred up deep feelings in Harrison, because it soon feels the brunt of his wrath. And then they That's broke a, his leg! Oh, hey, get it, hey! Come on! Number 19, Harrison wants to make a slapstick comedy, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. When you think of Harrison Ford, you don't necessarily think slapstick comedy, but that doesn't mean the actor isn't interested in exploring the genre. So would you ever consider doing a movie like that? Kidding? <laughs> Harrison explains why and gets to show off his comedic timing as he does it. He also manages to get a dig in at the red-headed host, much to the audience's delight. I, I love stupid. <laughs> why you have you come to I'm the right <laughs> place! <laughs> There's definitely some brilliant comedic directors that we'd all love to see Harrison work with, and they often share something in common, DNA. The Farley brothers, the, the Cone brothers, any brothers. <laughs> I would love that. Okay. I would like that. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. almost always brothers. Right. Number 18, Crash Landing, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Get off my plane. Harrison isn't just known for action on screen. He's also an accomplished pilot. However, there have been a few incidents, which Ellen can't help but remind him of. Yeah, I just knew you had small planes. I do have small planes. Because I've seen you crash those, so. <laughs> One time. All right, all right. In 2015, Harrison famously made a crash landing on a golf course when his World War II era plane's engine failed. Experienced pilot, not his first crash, actually. This morning, he's recovering in the hospital. Of course mechanical failures happen, and pilots can't be responsible for everything, right? And I didn't crash. The plane, plane crashed. Crash. Okay. Take it easy, Harrison. We believe you. Just be careful up there. Number 17. Harrison's kids are not impressed. The Graham Norton Show. You'd think it would be pretty cool to have Han Solo as your dad. The father of five is very proud of his children although they aren't as impressed by him. Frankly, my kids could give a shit. <laughs> and apparently, his kids are just as confused by the popularity of their dad's characters as he is, and it's made them pretty choosy about their friend groups. And would not deign to be friends with anybody who did care. Oh, really? No. Being around show business your entire life is not something most of us can relate to. So while it's cool to have Indy as your dad, it may not have the same magic as the movies. Growing up in the, you know, in the sausage factory, they, they, my, my wife is an actress, uh, I'm an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Number 16, The Broccoli Joke, Late Night, with David Letterman. If I tell this joke, my wife is gonna be so mad at me. You don't often think of Harrison Ford as a joke teller, but when David Letterman eggs him on, it turns out he's a natural. Will you write me a little note? I'll write you a little note. Yeah, it mean quite a lot to her coming from me. Yeah. The premise is simple. A lady at a grocery store is upset that there's no broccoli and won't stop bugging the employee about it, who's just trying to stock the produce. Yeah, I'm a, uh, mister, mister, and he turns around and it's the same lady. She says, um, where's the broccoli? You got any broccoli? But when the employee has a genius way of informing her that his answer hasn't changed, it leads to a classic punchline. He says, how do you spell dog? Like in dogmatic, she says D-O-G. He says, how do you spell like in broccoli? She says, there is no broccoli. He says, that's what I'm trying to tell you, lady. That's definitely an instant classic. Number 15, doing his own stunts, Late Night with David Letterman. 
Harrison's been going on David Letterman since the Rye host got his start, and it's always been a great showcase for his underrated facial expressions. And way back in 1982, he was already perfecting his trademark befuddled look. You were doing your own stunt work on Raiders of the Lost Ark, and uh, which seemed to be uh, not true. While he's been known for doing a lot of stunts on his own, props given to where props are due. Guys, much more prepared to do that mm -hmm. than me. But the, the, and to suffer the consequences. That doesn't mean he wasn't prepared for the role, or to bat down some of the rumors about his methods that Dave was attempting to spread. E even if it uh, included uh, chemically preparing. I didn't say that. <laughs> Sure, Harrison, of course you didn't. Number 14, Carpenter Ford, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Would you charge more to a celebrity than you would to a regular civilian? Wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. Harrison's work as a carpenter in early 1970s LA is an essential part of Ford lore. Interestingly enough, he even built Sergio Mendez a recording studio, something the singer himself wrote about on Facebook. And uh, there he is, Sergio Mendez. He did a lot of very popular songs. And that's me. And, and <laughs> But it was the 70s, and considering the goofy look on Harrison's face, Jimmy makes some assumptions about what else could have been going on at the scene. And there you are, baked out of your mind, yes? Harrison denies any responsibility, of course, and insists he was always the utmost professional while on the job. No, oh, I'm not baked out of my mind, I'm working. <laughs> Working man. Number 13, punching Ryan Gosling in the face. The Graham Norton Show. Look at his face. Look at his face. When Harrison accidentally punched Ryan Gosling for real while filming Blade Runner 2049, he first claimed ignorance. But you weren't meant to punch him. Right? Oh, I misread the script. <laughs> but when he went to his co-star's trailer to apologize with a bottle of scotch in hand, he found Ryan busy, but he didn't let the bottle go to waste. And I went back to my trailer <laughs> with the rest of the bottle. <laughs> I had the intention to leave it, but nah. <laughs> I mean, can you really blame him? It hurts to throw a punch, even if you're Harrison Ford. My hand hurt. <laughs> I needed some medicine. <laughs> Number 12, drinking with Ryan this morning. You having a drink? I think it's, uh, I feel like that's where, this, that's where this is headed. When it comes to Harrison and Ryan, whiskey is something they have in common. But unfortunately for Harrison, when the pair sat down with Allison Hammond, he didn't get a taste. Help yourselves. <laughs> Notice there's nothing left for me. She's wrong. <laughs> but when the FOMO gets too strong, Harrison forgets his table manners and helps himself. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see these two sit back and relax, even if it requires a little liquid courage. This morning. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. What a morning. <laughs> Number 11, Bullwhip Practice, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Indiana Jones is known for his whip just as much as his brown fedora. And even though Harrison makes using it look easy, he definitely requires some practice. Something, if you let that skill go for five, ten years, it probably just goes, right? It's probably gone. It's probably gone. Yeah. But when Conan asks Harrison about getting reacquainted with the famous prop for the latest installment, he gets an interesting answer. Well, I think maybe I'll use a much shorter whip. Just a shorter? Time. Yeah. <laughs> One with those little tassels. A little on tassel on it? <laughs> That's not good. It would definitely be a new twist on the character, although Conan really doesn't want to see it. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be good if you use a little wrist motion to try and get people. You know, what do I know? Number 10. He's still got it. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny press conference. I think you're still very hot. <laughs> Harrison had always been known as a sex symbol, and even in his advancing years, he got a lot of attention, like he did at this press conference for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And, and you've still got it. I mean, how do you keep fit? Uh, and will you can you ride a horse? <laughs> While Harrison's surprised by the first question, the second one interests him a little more, and it proves that age is just a number. Let me tell you, yeah, I can ride a horse. <laughs> If they let me. <laughs> Finally, he gets around to answering the question about how he stays in shape, and he chalks it all up to genetics. I've been blessed with this body. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess most of us are just plain out of luck. Number nine, drinking with Jimmy, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. I just don't know ooh, how to. Ooh, ooh, I don't know ooh, how I to. Don't... 
Ooh, I like this. You do. No, I, I don't know how I to can't pronounce, pronounce it, but I... As we've established, Harrison likes his scotch, and here he hits the sauce yet again, this time with Jimmy Fallon as his drinking buddy. Let's just hope wife Kalista Flockhart is okay with it. It's yeah, okay? Listen. Well, yeah, I think we're allowed to do it. I mean, so, uh, you're Harrison Ford. Uh, not okay with you. Okay with my wife. Oh, my God, sorry. <laughs> the mood gets loose, and when Jimmy confirms to Harrison that he's not from Canada, so do Harrison's lips. I know a lot of people think I'm Canadian, but I'm not. No, no, uh, a lot of people think you're a humorist. <laughs> but Harrison confirms that it's all fun and games, and the two end up finishing things on a sweet note. Well, I, I just think you're, I think I, I, you're a fantastic host. You, thank you, you, thank you. Well, please, no. Number eight. Margot Robbie loves her son Harrison, The Graham Norton Show. Harrison Ford has fans of all ages, one of which turns out to be Margot Robbie, which Graham Norton blabs much to the Barbie star's embarrassment. Uh, Margot, she'll blush you tell you, but she is an enormous Harrison Ford fan. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is really weird. <laughs> of course, Harrison is used to women getting flustered around him, and he's humble enough to make a joke at his own expense. Well, this is your intervention. <laughs> <laughs> but when Harrison finds out that Margot's favorite movie of his is the mostly forgotten Six Days, Seven Nights, he's a little surprised. Very good movie if no one's seen it. I guess it's still available. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. And just in case you have a hard time finding a copy, Harrison has you covered. This in fact, I have, a I'm bunch, too excited. I have a bunch of DVDs in the back of my car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you out in the street. <laughs> Number seven, Indie Trivia. With Conan's producer, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. While Harrison has always enjoyed his fans and his crowd-pleasing movies have made billions, he's not exactly a fanboy that holds onto the props. I, I don't want all that crap around my house. <laughs> When Conan's superfan producer, Jordan Schlansky, comes out to test Harrison's indie trivia knowledge, it gets off to a, shall we say, surprising start. He's a nice looking man. He's a nice looking man, yes. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> this isn't going the way I thought it would. As Harrison and the producer continue to lock eyes, much to Conan's discomfort, it appears that a connection has been made. Jordan finally manages to get his question out, but unfortunately for him, Harrison was less than interested. What was the color of the original whip fall? <laughs> Who gives a <laughs> Number six, Millennium Cocktail, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Adult beverages frequently appear on Jimmy Fallon's show, especially when Harrison stops by. But when a friend of Jimmy's comes up with a special cocktail, Harrison is full of nothing but scorn. It's called the Millennium Fallon, okay? Get it? No. And uh... It gets off to a rough start, as Jimmy shows that his bartending skills are, shall we say, not up to par. It's colored, colored ice blocks. When Jimmy eventually does get the drinks going, Harrison's reaction is to be expected, but not what the host was hoping for. How cool is that, right? What is what's it? What's cool? Well, what do you mean? It's, it's lit up. They look like uh, lightsabers. They look like two glasses with colored blocks of ice. <laughs> Harrison is a professional, but that doesn't mean he's not susceptible to peer pressure, and it seems like Jimmy and his Tonight Show audience are bad influences. You don't come have on, to. I'm working here. Oh, come on. Everyone is... <laughs> you can see them. Number five, Jason Siegel Shrinkage, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Before Harrison began work on Apple TV's shrinking, he took time to brush up on co-star Jason Siegel's credits, specifically 2008's Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which, unfortunately, he had a little trouble remembering the name of. Uh, of uh, Forgetting Sarah, Sarah Marshall? Forgetting Sarah, I forgot that it was Forgetting <laughs> Sarah Marshall. When the producer asked him what he thought of the classic comedy, Harrison did remember one famous scene in particular. The producer asked me uh, what I thought, and I said, um, nice penis. <laughs> Although Harrison was rather complimentary of his co-star, when Steven tries to describe the scene, Harrison doesn't want to hear it. Where he's full frontal, you see the, the seagull. You see the... the j <laughs> Number four, leave it to Harrison, late night with David Letterman. Although Harrison has been acting in film and television since he was a young man, he was never what you would call a child actor. So when David Letterman lists credits claiming otherwise, he has something to say about it. Uh, 1958, uh, Chester Anderson, Leave it to Beaver. 
You played Chester Anderson on Leave it to Beaver. I don't no, remember. No, I didn't. It's right there in the book. No, I didn't, Dave. But for some reason, Dave just can't seem to let it go, and vows to prove that the actor was on the classic sitcom with the help of a clip. Leave it to Beaver? No, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's wrong. Really? Yeah. The, the big book here of theater and the movie actors? Wrong. Well, we have a little clip of that particular... After the clip, Dave shows a side-by-side -side comparison, and it's clear that Harrison is finally proven right. <laughs> That's not it, me. It's not even close. No. Number three, piercing Jimmy's ear. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Because he's one of the coolest people in history and I want to be like him, I've asked Harrison Ford to pierce my ear. Uh... Just like Indy's fedora or Han's blaster, Harrison's earring has always been his trademark. So when Jimmy Fallon asked for one of his own, he couldn't help but oblige. But Jimmy was feeling a little nervous. What's the worst that could happen to me? I, could I get an infection? Nah. No. You could bleed to death. <laughs> not surprisingly, Jimmy's nerves did not improve any after Harrison took a shot of tequila and put on his glasses to see. You don't even have 20-20 vision. This is like an awful idea. After a little bit of pushing and a lot of squealing from the audience, Harrison finally gets the needle in and looks quite satisfied with himself in the process. Number two, the Star Wars Holiday Special, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. The Star Wars Holiday Special is as infamous as the original trilogy is famous, and Conan has no qualms reminding Harrison about it. Came together and they made this Star Wars Christmas special, and the tape's been passed around for years, and the rumors that Lucas is trying to suppress it, because none of you look happy while you're making this thing. When Conan asks Harrison about the infamous shoot, the quiet star clams up even more. Do you remember making this Christmas special? I think it was 1978. No, you don't remember it? Even though Harrison denies its very existence, Conan claims to have brought the evidence. Lordy, there are tapes. What if I were to tell you that I had a little piece of tape right now? After Conan plays the clip, though, Harrison can't help but bask in the applause. Thank you. <laughs> Number one, a chewy love triangle, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Yeah, Jimmy. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> Chewbacca and Han have been partners for a long time, but as this appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live shows, it's not always been smooth flying. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> always trying to blame me. You're the one who couldn't keep it in your, in your furry pants. <laughs> when Jimmy tries to get to the bottom of the long simmering beef, Harrison is tight-lipped, but he does give us a hint that it may involve a love triangle. What happened between you? He knows what he did. <laughs> Despite Jimmy's best efforts at a reconciliation, things escalate quickly and some harsh words are thrown. She was my wife. <laughs> you wookie sack of <laughs> Unfortunately, the reunion didn't exactly work out, with Harrison making a rather abrupt exit and not mincing any words as he does. You didn't and mean you, to I'll see you in hell. <laughs> If you enjoyed this list, be sure to subscribe, then click the video on screen to watch our latest. See you there.